No matter if you are just kicking off your career as an author or you have already been published at some point in your journey as an author, the truth is you are going to face some letdowns or setbacks or bad news. As someone who works with authors for a living, believe me when I say even the most high profile best selling authors also run into challenges throughout their career. While I try to keep things optimistic and upbeat on my channel, what I'm really passionate about is empowering authors to grow in their career and know what to expect as they embark on the publishing journey. Because of that, it's important to me to not shy away from some hard truths and the realities of what it is like to be an author. So today I want to go into some low points or disappointments that you might face across your author journey. And in fact, most authors face all of the things I'm going to go over today. If you're a writer and you haven't joined this amazing community, I recommend subscribing to my channel. Every week, I either post videos with tips on publishing or I talk about how to strengthen your manuscript itself, especially if you are working on a novel. Speaking of that, if you do have a current work in progress, hop down into the description below and grab my free story self assessment worksheet. It's a simple, easy quiz designed to help you look at your manuscript from a new perspective and see what is working really well in it, as well as what could be improved so that you can return to it with fresh eyes and take it to the next level. Downloading that is going to sign you up for my newsletter where I give exclusive tips and insights from published authors and publishing industry professionals, so you don't wanna miss out on that. If you wanna go straight to the newsletter, the link is also in the description. So let's talk about the first hurdle or letdown that you're going to face as an author, and that is waiting seemingly forever for feedback. Getting feedback on your work is a crucial part of the publishing process. It is the part of the publishing process that I am most involved in as a developmental book editor, and I truly see the value in it. Because receiving feedback and then editing your manuscript accordingly is what's going to make it as strong as possible for your eventual readers. But the truth is that the feedback stage of the process often takes much longer than most writers anticipate. Having someone read an entire book and take the time to provide thoughtful, constructive feedback just takes quite a while. It is a very time intensive and energy intensive process. So if you have sent your manuscript for feedback either to beta readers, critique partners, or your literary agent, or even your editor at your publishing house, it is likely going to take them quite a while to get back to you. In the case that you're working with a professional in the publishing industry, such as your literary agent or your editor at your publishing house, it could take anywhere from four to eight plus weeks. If you're working with a beta reader or a critique partner and you don't set a clear expectation for when you are going to hear back, then you might find yourself waiting months and only hearing crickets. The best way to reset your expectations when it comes to feedback is to be upfront with whoever you are sending your manuscript to in asking for an estimated turnaround time. But even when you do that, I would still recommend being quite flexible on your end. Because for instance, in the case of a beta reader or a critique partner, it's likely that that person has a lot of other responsibilities and likely a job that they need to prioritize and they are doing this favor for you in their free time. So you do want to be understanding of that. When it comes to working with your literary agent and the editor at your publishing house, the publishing industry is just notoriously slow moving and the professionals who are working in the industry are notoriously very backlogged. So I promise that it is not due to a lack of interest in wanting to work with you. Obviously your literary agent and your editor signed with you because they want to work with you on this story. It is just a case that they need to find the time to sit down and do it and ultimately fit it into their other priorities that they have at the moment. The next big disappointment I see authors facing is underwhelming feedback from friends and family. The story you've written is likely incredibly personally important to you, whether it is a personal story in some aspect or it's a fictional world that you have created, it's likely that you want to share that with your loved ones because it is such an important part of your life and you've put so much time and energy into it. But in the event that you do decide to share your work with your spouse, partner, friends, or family, I really recommend trying to resist the temptation to put a lot of weight into how they are going to respond, especially if they are not a particularly creative person 
or they don't read widely in the genre you are writing in. That's because I've seen authors get deeply hurt and upset if one of their loved ones read their manuscript and then doesn't really provide them the super enthusiastic response that they were looking for. Or perhaps they respond, but it's overly vague and you can't really tell if they even read the book or not. It is possible that what you have written is just out of their wheelhouse and they don't frankly really know how to respond and they don't know how to evaluate it against others in the genre because they're just not familiar, right? So really try to remove any expectations you have set around how they are going to respond and whatever their reaction is, do not take it personally. It can be really helpful and fruitful to cultivate a group of writing friends who do share your interests in your genre because their feedback in many cases is likely going to be more helpful and more valuable than feedback from friends and family who don't really understand what it is you're trying to accomplish. Those group of friends are likely going to be more attuned to the craft of writing and be able to give you more tailored feedback than friends and family. I'm not saying don't share it with friends and family, I'm just saying don't put too much weight in what they have to say. The next big letdown that all authors face is bad reviews. Bad reviews are the bane of an author's existence, but they are a undeniable reality of publishing your work. So this is something you can't avoid and are inevitably going to face at one point or another in your author career. Because of that, I think it's best to get ahead of it now and realize that no matter how much blood, sweat, and tears you put into your book, there's still gonna be someone out there who gives you a one-star review. If you want to feel better about bad reviews, check out the Yelp page of your favorite restaurant and you will certainly see many one-star reviews of people who do not agree with you on the quality of the restaurant, right? So that's why you're going to have to learn to just brush off the negative reviews. Remember that your book is not meant to be for everyone and that is absolutely okay. Think of a movie or a musician that your partner or your friend or your family loves that you hate, right? Everyone has their own subjective taste and that comes to books as well. So whenever you do find yourself confronting a bad review and then feeling bad about it, even potentially doubting your abilities as a writer, what I want you to do is turn to the five-star reviews and relish in those because those are the readers who understood what you were trying to accomplish, the story resonated with them, and ultimately those are the people that you are writing for. The next big disappointment that all authors face is low attendance at author events. There was a Twitter thread that went viral where a author posted that only two people showed up to her author signing event and she felt very upset and even embarrassed about it. It caught fire on Twitter and many high profile authors chimed in to say that they had experienced the exact same thing, including Cheryl Strayed and Margaret Atwood. So this goes to show that if you host an author event or attend one, and no one shows up or very few people show up, it does not dictate your value, your credibility, or your skills as an author. And it certainly does not mean that you will not have a successful career. Just look at any of the examples of best-selling authors who chimed into this Twitter thread. Author events can definitely be fun and it can be a way to make you feel more legit as an author. But remember, what is most important is the story that you are putting out. And the truth is that the vast majority of your readers are not going to be people that you meet at author events anyway. So there isn't necessarily going to be a huge correlation between a successful author event and the success of your book. The final letdown that all authors face at one point or another is not winning awards or becoming a bestseller. This is another challenge that even the most high profile authors face. Whether it's a Booker Prize or a Goodreads Choice Award or a bestseller list or even the coveted Pulitzer Prize, there are always going to be other authors who win over you and that is completely okay. Remember that simply being in the running for a prize is a huge accomplishment. But even if you never reach that point, that is no reason to doubt your abilities as an author. Awards can certainly feel good, and to some degree, they can generate more sales for your book, but by no means are they an end-all be-all for you as an author. There are plenty of successfully selling books that do not have any specific accolades attached to them. It can be really easy to get caught in this trap of chasing awards and recognition and bestseller status, but remember that your value as an author ultimately is within yourself. It has to be generated internally. 
You cannot rely on external committees or criteria that are ultimately out of your control. You have to be writing for yourself and recognize your value for yourself. I hope this video helped you feel better equipped to tackle any obstacles or low points that you face in your author career. And I hope it gives you the motivation to persevere through your publishing journey, even through the tough times. Let me know in the comments if you have personally experienced any of these letdowns or any others that you might've run into. I really value this community that we have built and I love seeing the engagement and interactions in the comments. So please share your story if you feel compelled to and comfortable doing so. I have another video that goes over destructive writer habits that can help put you in the right mindset to continue on through your author journey. If you liked this video, please hit that thumbs up button. It really helps out my channel. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And don't forget my free story self assessment worksheet and my newsletter link in the description below. Thanks so much for watching and happy writing.